So this video is a quick tutorial to show you how to deploy the Power BI report, uh, which is provided along with the end-to-end uh, -end Synapse demo for uh, CMS Medicare Part D data. Uh, so once you've deployed uh, Azure Data Lake, Azure Data Factory, and Azure Synapse from the GitHub repository, uh, you'll then be able to deploy this Power BI file uh, on top of it. And then once you populate this Power BI file, you can then publish it uh, to your Power BI account and connect it to your Synapse database to, uh, to go ahead and uh, try everything out. So the URL for GitHub can be found in the description for this video. You'll see that there's a PBIT template uh, here, which you can uh, you can access, and the PBIT template is a template for a Power BI report that goes on top of both Synapse and then also the CSV file, which is included in this repository. Now, the reason there's a separate CSV file is strictly for demo purposes. Uh, I could have added that data to Synapse, uh, but we wanted to be able to show that you can take something like a CSV file that's stored. Uh, somewhere by a business user and then use that data to filter a Synapse model. So that's why there's uh, that separate file uh, and the PBIT file is gonna connect to both Synapse and that CSV file. So in order to do this, uh, you can go ahead and download the file. And once that file is downloaded, just go ahead and open it up using Power BI Desktop. And because it's a PBIT file that's been parameterized, it's going to prompt you for some parameters that it will use to populate uh, the report. Let's give it a moment. So there's three different things here. So first of all is going to be the URL to your Synapse instance, which you have deployed using uh, other parts of the GitHub repository. The second is the database name within Synapse. And then the third is the URL to that, uh, that Excel CSV, or CSV file uh, that's also included uh, within the repository. You can put that anywhere and then just go get the URL to it and include it as, uh, as one of these parameters. So if I go ahead and open up uh, just some stored versions of those parameters that I'm using, uh, I'll go ahead and copy the URL for the Synapse uh, data source, paste that in, then I'll go get the database name. And finally, I'll get the uh, location on my C drive where I'm storing that CSV file. Uh, once again, could have added this to Synapse uh, in the data factory portion of the demo, but this is to show that, uh, that you can add uh, outside data uh, to your data model in order to, uh, to filter things that are coming from Synapse. So you get some self-service capabilities and then you're not having to rely on IT all the time to, to add new fields and, and new dimensions. Now let's go ahead and load. And you'll see Power BI uses that information to start running queries to populate the report. And scrolling down, you'll see that uh, the different tables of information have been cached from Synapse. Uh, most of these are reference or reference tables or dimensions, small amounts of data where it just makes sense to cache it right in the Power BI layer. Uh, you can see that the CSV file was also cached so that we can use that to filter out uh, states that are on the continental United States. And then you'll see it's still running a query uh, on one of the aggregations. And I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, with aggregations, basically, you're able to cache some of the data from Synapse in order to turbocharge uh, report performance 
by having some data cached within the Power BI tabular model and some data remaining in direct query mode against Synapse. So you get this hybrid model where you can put data in different places in order to have uh, optimal performance of your queries. Once that completes, you'll see that the template then populates the report with the data uh, that it has accessed from Synapse and also that uh, CSV file. And you should see this template, which is, uh, it's a good starter. Now you can obviously build more reports. You can uh, start over, delete all of these and, and build something from scratch. Uh, you could change the data model and do something different, but hopefully it gives you a, a template to start with where you can uh, at least see kind of uh, what that solution from Synapse uh, would look like within Power BI. Uh, additionally, if you were to uh, do some advanced analytics, uh, you can start uh, doing something like a Pareto analysis to, to start tiering uh, you know, different uh, specialties. Um, moving back to the summary page, uh, you can even uh, hover over things and get additional information. Here I hover over California. Uh, I get some additional info about uh, the individual drugs that are being uh, prescribed in California within the data set uh, for that year and, and all the different filter criteria that you select. Uh, there's a scatter chart down here where you can see how things kind of change over a year. Uh, and this is all uh, running over 122 million rows of source data. Uh, so, so you're able to get a really good query performance by using uh, that caching capability along with uh, the, the Synapse tool. So combining Power BI caches with Synapse uh, can give you very fast query performance. If you actually wanna see what's being queried and, uh, and dig into it a little bit, if you go to the view mode, and turn on the performance analyzer, uh, you can start recording your actual queries. And then if you click on something, it'll actually record uh, what's being queried and you can even copy the query and, and go see what it's doing. Additionally, at the data model level, if I go ahead and open that up, you'll see that we have a dimensional model uh, that was built using Azure Data Factory and then ported into Azure Synapse. Um, and in the middle here, you'll notice we have these AGs. And what these AGs are is caches of data from Synapse that are stored. Uh, one is with, right now they're both within Power BI uh, in order to kind of turbocharge your queries over Synapse. So you'll see that the details table, if we open up the advanced tab is in direct query mode. So queries that hit that table are going straight against Synapse. Uh, whereas this aggregation table, is hitting the same data, but it's at a slightly different level of granularity. Uh, so you'll see that, uh, for example, the individual provider table does not connect to that ag, uh, and the geography table does not connect to that ag. So if you select something um, at the state level, it's going to hit that aggregation and you'll get a very fast query. And if you drill all the way down to the city level, then it's gonna run a query directly against Synapse. So you get this hybrid mode where you can put data in different places in order to have very fast queries at the high level and then also limitless scale at the detail level uh, with the, uh, the power of uh, Synapse. And this ag down here is currently part of the Power BI model and it's actually imported into Power BI because it's not that big. If I were to go look at the table itself, you'll see there's only a little under 4 million rows at the aggregate level. Um, but because this aggregation also exists within Synapse, if you wanted to, you could just eliminate this aggregation from Power BI. And then if configured correctly, uh, any queries that would traditionally hit this ag within Power BI will hit the materialized view within Synapse that's populating this aggregation. So, so you can kind of selectively say, hey, do I want to put my data in a Power BI cache? Do I want to put it in a Synapse cache as a materialized view? Or do I want to go directly against Synapse? And to the end user, this is all invisible. So effectively, an end user only sees the details table. And when they're running queries, they don't know which aggregation uh, it's, it's running against. So uh, that's an overview of how to import and get going with this uh, 
Power BI report on, on top of the end-to-end -end Synapse demo using uh, CMS Medicare Part D.